As I've said before, I'm very fortunate because my wife absolutely adores wildlife and loves coming out for the day. So I'm photographing, she's my spotter, she's a great birder. There's only one drawback and that is I'm all packed up, I'm ready to go, but I'm having to wait for her, of course. Spend half my life waiting for her. I suppose part of it is because we don't have to do things like this. Okay, so cameras in there. Can you see the fridge at the back there? Cheers. We've got tripods. We've got absolutely everything that we're going to need. We do take our own food. You've seen the fridge in the car. And we call it a veritable feast. And this is why. see we don't starve wildlife photography it's hard work you need to keep up your sustenance Okay, well I'm sat in the car, the wife says I'm coming, and that was five minutes ago, still waiting, still waiting, and still waiting, you guessed it, still waiting, hooray, and we're off, I kid you not, she's forgot something and she's gone back in for it. Come on, what are you waiting for? Birds. I can even hear a cuckoo in the distance. I think I've just spotted a black cat. really like to do and that is to drive around in the car when I'm around the fields and as you study in the fields safely of course as you study in the fields it's amazing what you can spot when you spot something you drive on a bit you pull over you get your camera out you get all prepared and then you sneak around the edge and grab the shot now I was actually coming down this road one Sunday it was out with the camera and I was coming down this road and I noticed on the left that there was a hare running across the farmer's field. So I went ahead of it and I noticed 
a pull in where the farmer's gate was and it was open. So I pulled in there because there was a dike and this here had gone down this dike. And I thought, well, if I can get round to where the dike is, I might be able to get a shot. So I pulled into this particular gate, which I'll show you that in a minute. I pulls in, I opens my door, and I was at the end of this dike. Anyway, I've opened my door, I've set my lens right in between the V of the open door, and this here was running down the side of this dike towards me. It then stopped, it went down, its head down, and I thought it was going for a drink of water. Well, of course, I thought, well, that's going to be a great shot, a hare drinking water. And then, blow me, it jumped. And as it jumped, I fired off and I managed to get a shot where this hare was jumping across a dive in mid-air. He didn't quite make it. I think it was about eight foot wide this dike and I think he managed to jump about six foot. Went splash into the water, swam across the rest, up the bank and then ran away with all the water splashing off him. So this is the field that it was running across and on the other side of these bushes that's where the dike is. So it went down into the dike. I've pulled up here, I'm looking down the dike and then as it come running down the side of the dike, it went down, I thought for drink water, but it jumped over. And because I was here with my camera ready, I managed to get it in flight. By the way, 10 minutes after that happened, this happened. What a great day that was. When you're driving through farmland, Take it nice and steady, looking from the left to the right to see if you can spot something. I've had some wonderful photographs driving through farmland, all through the different seasons as well. You can come through, you come in the winter, and you can see flocks of field fair, red wing. You often see red leg partridge. There's always buzzards knocking about. And they've got these dikes which of course if you look down any dike you never know what you're going to see down those When the mayflies are out, you can have a lot of fun if you've got some birds. These are black-headed gulls and they're catching the mayflies in the air, but they're picking them off the water as well. So, um, all fast moving, you need quite a small lens. This is a 400mm f5.6 and we're going along. We've got a little bit of water reflection, but it's not enough to, to actually have to do any exposure compensation. So. I'm at 5.6, ISO 640, and it's giving me sort of 1250th of a second on the shutter speed. And that's plenty to freeze these and to get one that's actually dipping in the water. You're all over the place, but it's great fun. 
My name is Mark Blake. I do hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please hit the like button and possibly subscribe. Thank you.